In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how we can extend the scope of a variable so that it can be accessed by all of the procedures in the same module. Let's start by opening up the file I've downloaded and extracted. And when we've opened that, we can choose to enable content. It's the same file we've been working on in the previous few parts of this lesson. Let's head into the Visual Basic Editor and have a look at the code we've got. So this is the same code we've seen several times previously. What we'd like to do is divide this subroutine into a few different parts to help with organizing the code. We've done this in earlier modules, but we're going to revisit the technique. And the first thing we're going to do is extract the part that calculates the BMI for the individual character and convert this into a separate subroutine. The problem with doing things that way is that the second subroutine we're going to create will also need access to the weight in kilograms and height in meters variables, as well as the BMI variable. So we need to think about how we declare the variables to make that possible. Let's start by creating a new subroutine in the same module called Calculate BMI. I'm going to do this down towards the bottom of the subroutine, but before the clear BMI data. So let's create a new sub called Calculate BMI. What I can then do is copy this line of code from the main subroutine, BMI equals weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. So I can copy that and simply paste that into the Calculate BMI subroutine. And then finally, what I'd like to do is replace the line in the original subroutine, which performs that calculation. I can delete that and then I can simply call my Calculate BMI procedure. So if I look into the IntelliSense list, press Control and Space and look for the Calculate BMI subroutine. There it is. If we now attempt to run the process BMI list procedure, we should encounter an immediate problem. We see an error message we've already seen in the previous part of the lesson, compile error variable not defined. It also highlights in the background of the procedure that the weight in kilograms variable hasn't been declared. And that's what that error message is indicating. The reason this appears, of course, is because we have the option explicit directive at the top of the module, and that requires every variable in this module to be declared. Now, of course, we have actually declared the weight in kilograms variable. The problem is it's not currently accessible to the calculate BMI subroutine because we've declared this variable inside the process BMI list subroutine. When you declare a variable within a subroutine, it's said to be local to that procedure. So it can't be accessed from any procedures in which it's not declared. The solution to this, first of all, is to reset the procedure. So we stop running it. And then we can simply move this variable's declaration to the beginning of the module. So below the option explicit statement, we can simply move our variable declaration to sit just below there. I'll give myself a blank line or two to separate those so it's a little easier to see. We have the same problem, however, with the height in meters and BMI variables. If I attempt to run this subroutine again, I get the same error message, variable not defined, but now highlighting the height in meters variable instead. If I were to extend the scope of the height in meters variable, I'd then receive another problem to reference the BMI variable. So let's solve that problem as well by moving both height in meters and BMI, move their declarations to the top of the module. Declaring variables at the top of the module like this makes these variables accessible to every single procedure in the same module. So if I were to run the process BMI list procedure again, I'll now find that this works perfectly. And I can check that that's the case back in Excel. If I clear the BMI data and calculate the BMI, everything is now working as intended. We can use the same debugging techniques we looked at in a previous part of this lesson to work with variables declared at the module level. Let's start by viewing the locals window. So I can go to the view menu and view the locals window, and then I can begin stepping through my process BMI list procedure. There are a couple of minor differences when working with variables declared at the module level. If I press F8 to begin stepping through, I can see that in the locals window, the only variable it seems that I've got declared is the BMI band variable. So the locals window by default only shows you variables that are local to the procedure you're stepping through. You'll find a list of all the module level variables located within the little collapsed section here next to the module name. 
If I simply click the plus symbol next to module 1, it will then show me any variables declared at the module level. At that point, I can then continue stepping through. And of course, I can use the, the, the mouse hover option to see the values of variables at any stage. One other thing you may have noticed as well is that the values of these module level variables are already populated, even though I've only just begun stepping through the procedure. So when you declare variables at the module level, they retain their values even when the procedures that reference them end. Be careful of that, actually. That's something to be wary of. If you assume that all variables start with a particular default value, that may no longer be the case when you have module level variables. I can carry on stepping through now and I'll see the values of these variables will change in the usual way. When I access a different procedure, annoyingly, the, uh, the variable section collapses again, so I can expand that and see those values change. And then I can return to the original procedure, which called calculate BMI, and then see these other values changing again as well. At this point, I'll just hit the F5 key to continue through to the end of the procedure. There is one final optional thing we can do to our variable declarations at the top of this module, and that's that rather than using the dim keyword, we can exchange dim for the word private. This doesn't affect the way the variable behaves in any way whatsoever. Using either dim or private at a module level variable does exactly the same thing. The reason you might consider doing this using the word private rather than dim is just to be able to clearly tell at a glance that this is a module level variable as opposed to one that's declared within the scope of a single subroutine. So it's just a nice visual way to distinguish between local and module level variables. At this point, you can either continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson, or you can simply move on to the next part of the lesson, which explains how to extend the scope of your variables so that they can be accessed from every single module in the same project.